goal was to shoot it so that the, the head, the eye, the bill are all sharp, which this one is. And then I just wanted it to melt away after that. Once I kind of saw how they were flying in the areas they were flying through, I was able to change my position to take advantage of it. All right, and welcome to another edition of Wildlife Inspired. Today's show is another one of our 10 Images With series, and today we have Tracy Sepkovic. Tracy, say hello. Hey, everyone. All right. Thanks for having me, Scott. All right. Hey, uh, Tracy is a fellow Pennsylvanian, and I got to know her a few years ago. She had, I think, made a switch a little bit from, from doing some landscapes and got interested in birds, and we had gotten to talk a little bit and, and bounce some ideas off each other. Tracy, I want to guess that was about three years ago. Does that sound about right? Um, I got my 100 to 400 in February of 2016, and that's when I really started focusing on birds. Okay. So, yeah. Yep, so just about three years. Um, I will tell you one of the things that I'm really, really impressed with, and one of the reasons I wanted to get Tracy on the show was she does a, a really tremendous job uh, getting out in the field and putting a lot of time in. And I think through these series of images we're going to look at today, you're going to see uh, just a lot of variety in her work. She doesn't do just birds. Um, I do have other photographers on here for mammals. and I don't really do landscapes, but some mammals. Uh, so we don't have any landscape shots. But um, Tracy, just before we get into your 10, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself, what your background is, and uh, anything else you want to throw in here. Well, um, I got my first DSLR probably back in 2009, um, and I got that because I needed um, some more shutter speed, a little more quickness when I was um, getting my kids playing soccer. Um, and then from there, um, you know, I love watching the birds on my front porch, and, you know, I started trying to take pictures of them, and, you know, it just kind of snowballed from there. Uh, like I said, I, I got my first um, birding lens, which was my 100 to 400 in February of 2016 and I've just been moving forward with it since. Yeah and one of the other things that Tracy and I have in common is we actually both I think purchased cameras to photograph our children playing soccer. Yes. Um, I have uh, <laughs> three kids that played college soccer. I think Tracy you may be on your way to having a kid playing college soccer from the from the sounds yeah. of it. Yeah yeah it might be pretty awesome I'd love to see that. Yeah she did a she did a great job I actually got to uh, to hear Tracy uh, get really excited on her Facebook page as she was sharing her her daughter making a run at the state championship did they actually <laughs> win that right well they had a 25 and 0 season yeah we won the state champ it was pretty amazing, amazing. just amazing season yeah, yeah. amazing stuff all right yeah. well, we're gonna we're gonna jump right in here let me um right let me pull up your album and okay. let's get it started right back i'm gonna oh i flashed through a couple of the beginning all right i've got up on the screen now i've got a snowy owl uh this yeah. is one of your looser compositions tell me a little bit about this one um you know, we drove up to Canada for snowy owls, and um, this was the first day there. We were just amazed. We got there, turned down the road, and saw several owls right away. Um, we stuck around until it was starting to get dark. The owls were coming up from their roost, you know, actively hunting in the fields. And this one owl off in the distance just, it just grabbed my attention. Um, I kept my eyes on it, and even though I was watching these owls that were hunting in the field closer to me, my eye just was drawn to this one that it was just perched off in the distance in these trees, just kind of watching everything happen. So, you know, I climbed up on the up onto my forerunner and was kind of leaning over the roof there, trying to get a little more elevation and um, grab some shots. And you know, this ended up being one of my favorite images. Actually, I and then there was just something about it, something about seeing it there on that twilight blue sky that I just love. Yeah, you know what's interesting, and one of the reasons I like your work because you do use a lot of different compositions. This is a this is I guarantee you this is an image that a lot of people, especially when they're new to bird photography, they wouldn't post it and they probably wouldn't even bother to process it because, you know, it's not one of mm -hmm. those feather detail, the eyes, no, you know, it's not one of those mm -hmm. images. It's really more about the uh, the composition and the scene more so than just the the detail yeah. on the bird. Yeah, it's just, you know, you know, and and I agree with what you're saying. You know, it's it's not typically what I would go for. It's busy. There are some sticks, limbs, branches, trees, but it's it was just different. It was just different seeing this owl perched up there in the diff in the distance like that and you know, it's it's grown on me and it's become one of my favorite images. Yeah, and the composition's perfect. 
Yeah, Thank you. I appreciate it. that. Yep, nailed Thanks. it. Thanks. You've got a little bit of the, it's kind of neat how the bird is framed in those two trees really well. So even though there's a big composition, there's also yeah. kind of a finer composition in there uh, as well. Yeah. Yeah. He kind of fits in that little pocket there. All right. Let's switch to the next one. We've got an, I've got the elk up on the screen now. Um, where was uh -huh. this one taken? Because I guess I know. Oh. Yes. <laughs> so most photographers um, in the Northeast are familiar with Benazet um, in Elk County, Pennsylvania, where there um, is a thriving herd of elk. And um, my dad has a camp about 50 miles north of there. And one thing I enjoy is going up um, and looking for elk with him. And then really, we, we spend a little time in Benazet, but then we just move on north and just, you know, hang out at camp, which is, you know, just awesome time with dad. But, you know, one of the challenges with Benazet is coming out with something that's different because so many photographers are there and we're all lined up. We're all shooting the same elk. We're all excited when the bull comes out. Um, and I, and I do that, but you know, I, I think to myself, what can I do to bring something differently out of this location? That's so popular. Um, so, you know, on this morning it was foggy, uh, moved around to another side of the field and, you know, I'm watching this elk and I, you know, I wasn't tall enough <laughs> to see over the goldenrod that was growing along the side of the road uh, at the edge of the field. So I kind of just let sunk down a little bit deeper to put the goldenrod in the foreground. And, you know, here he is in the fog with the goldenrod. Yep. And I kind of like the contrast of the cool fog and, and the goldenrod there. Yeah. And, and a really good use of foreground. So, you know, that's something I've seen yeah. in a lot of your work. But um, yeah. I thought that was a great one. I've got another. We've got two of these megafauna in the in the portfolio today. And it's going to be neat to look at the difference um, in how you approached both of them. So this was the first of the two. We'll get to the other one, I think, a little bit later down the road. But I'm going to pull okay. up this semi-palmated plover. Or how do you say it again? Could you I just... say plover. Okay. I'm in the plover family. Yeah. Not you, plover. You and the, <laughs> the British and the Canadians go plover. I did a poll I... on this. Do you remember I did an Instagram poll on you this did. like a year ago? You I did. think it was like 80 per, 70 percent of Americans or 80 percent say plover. Um, you're Not one me. Of, you're one of the freaks that say plover. I am. All right. So tell <laughs> us about this one. Um, you know, the, this was actually a tough shot to get, not, not for any technical reasons, uh, just because the, you know, there were so many birds. It was, it was taken in August, you know, as they were moving back down south and they were all just pulling one worm after another out of the sand. And, you know, you'd pick one and you'd hope you got a nice angle or some action on it. But I'm, I'm telling you probably nine times out of 10, I had butt. I had the backside facing yeah. me, you know, and you just, you just keep trying over and over and over. And then finally this little guy, he started pulling and twisting and working at it. And, and as he leans back, I'm like, perfect. I got a profile shot of him pulling this worm out. And that worm seemed to go on endlessly before <laughs> it, you know, before it finally snapped out. And I'm telling you, as soon as that worm snapped out, there were so many people, people, so many other birds just descended right on him like we saw him work it out we're going to take a piece of that so you know it's, it's fun it's funny i photographed these doing the same thing and the the worms that i got were like an inch like this is like a good i don't know like that's like almost a foot that's not even fair yeah he's he was working it <laughs> yeah that's awesome and you're not afraid to get down in the mud right like i think i showed a picture of you I, you didn't see it um no. but i have a yeah here you are i'm gonna put your picture up of you just <laughs> down in the mud this, this you feel comfortable here right like this is kind of what you like oh totally totally yeah that's you know that's you know that's in my element that's where i'm happy you know I, I, be prepared to get dirty or just stay home yeah. you know it's just <laughs> i remember when you first uh, started bird photography you had shared a uh, a grieve and you were asking about you know what how can i get this better and i said you know you just got to get lower and so you, I remember that. you showed this grieve to me and you're all excited and you came home. It was and you're a like, northern shoveler. Was it? it okay. Was a, well, you have I a better memory than I do. Yeah, I, I didn't know what it was. And I said, hey, what's this duck? You said, it's a northern shoveler. Get lower. Yeah. And I'm then like, you, what? but then you went you're back like, out lower. and you said, um, yeah, I think I nailed it. And I said, no. And you're no, like, you Scott, didn't. I was like literally a foot off yeah. the water. Yeah, and then, like, then, no. then you got it though. And once you got it, you you got it. Yeah. And I realized then I'm like, okay. You're going to have to get dirty. That's yep. just how it's going to be. Yeah. All right. I've got it. Okay, go ahead. No, nope, just go on. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next one I'm pulling up now. Um, this one's really, really interesting. So this is, is kind of like a, a high contrast. So you've got this mm -hmm. beautiful barred owl. Yeah. Yeah. Walk me through this one. 
So um, we were up in the Sac Zim Bog in Minnesota. And so when you go to the bog, you're looking for great gray owls, right? So your day you know, is, is starts before sunrise and ends after dark looking for great gray owls. And we drove by this bard that was perched low in a tree right alongside the road. And we slowed down when we saw the shape and we went, oh, it's a bard. We kept on driving. And I went, wait a minute. We just passed up a bard that was perched low alongside the road. Let's, let's not pass up what we have here. So we went back and um, she stayed there for a while. And then she swooped down lower and landed on top of a birdhouse in the backyard of a house across the street. So, you know, we're kind of set up there watching her. I'm like, something's going to happen here. You know, you got the the mice obviously feeding on the bird seed that's under the snow. Um, and we stood there for a while. And it took a long time. She stayed on top of that birdhouse for a while. Um, people started packing up, going home. You know, a couple of us stuck around. And and then she did it. She she made her, her dive off the birdhouse, plunged into the snow, sat here kind of wings mantled along the the top of the snow for a while and then in no time she was back up and out of there um she was unsuccessful in her attempt but it was, it was a pretty cool experience and a lesson in sticking it out and and working with what you have you know not passing up those opportunities yeah what, one of the things i like just about the image and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the story behind it but one thing i like about this image is mm -hmm. you don't normally see um these photographs taken from the back. So normally when birds go on prey, yes. and, and just so everybody knows, and I know Tracy and I kind of shoot raptors the same way. Tracy and I aren't throwing mice out for these guys. Oh my so, God, no. <laughs> So most of the time when you see these really impressive prey shots, they're often baited, not always. I don't want to throw everybody into that category. Right, right, right. So you're, and, and when you set those shots up, you typically set them up so that they're coming at you. In this case, you know, it's not always ideal to get it away, but the fact that it's, the bird's head was turned back in that at that angle really it makes it profile. unique yeah, yeah it makes it really unique because you're getting the back of the bird in the snow plus the head turned back as, as a profile so yeah, yeah if she really... hadn't turned her head it wouldn't have been the same image yep. but she did so yeah really neat thank you how many times have you been up there once just once okay yeah. and yeah. like is that a place you would go back to yeah i'm going back up this week <laughs> okay <laughs> you kidding me yeah I'm, I'm i'm going back up on wednesday so i'm looking forward to it how did you do not, when, when you went up the bog, there but okay but but in that area yeah same same i guess same species like same goals yes yes great gray owls you know i didn't see them last winter didn't make the trip up and uh so now this year i'm just i'm feeling it i'm feeling like i want to get some great grays again so awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've never been. It's on the list. Um, I keep oh, reshuffling my list. I know. Yeah. I know. Keep it on the list. Keep it's it on, on the list. list. I'll get up there one yeah. time. Yeah. All right, let's jump on to the next one. All right, so uh, this is the spoon yeah. bill. Yeah. Yeah. This was cool. Tell me about yeah. the light on this. Okay, so um, I have been shooting with some other just mixed flock, you know, little blue herons, tricolored, reddish egrets. Um, and, you know, I wanted the spoonbill. And then I, I look to the back um, of this tide pole and I see this one spoonbill just sweeping side to side back there. And the light was pretty amazing. And I could have approached her from two different angles. I could have approached her from the left and kind of had her back side lit. Um, or I could have gone around to the right a little bit and moved straight at her where um, she was against uh, shaded background. Um, so I decided, okay, let's do this. So I moved around the other side and um, you know, I exposed for the highlights that were on her, uh, on the plumage. And then uh, probably, I'm guessing I underexposed a little bit. Um, and then the rest is done in post-processing. So I got it nearly where I wanted yep. it in, in camera. And then just work with curves a little bit in post processing to to make it a little darker there. Yeah, and I it, like the I like the light on her spoon and those little drops yep. of water. That's that's what I like about. Yeah, that. how you don't even see like so that spoon bill is actually uh, the bill itself is is larger than it looks here. It almost looks yeah. like it's real thin, mm -hmm. like an avocet or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but because the it's rest just is the profile. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How would you describe your processing so like when you when you're doing an image like this that's a pretty standard image it needs some adjustment how much time are you taking on an image like this <laughs> i'm 
I don't like involved edits. Um, if I start spending too much time on it, I, I let it go. Um, I feel like I need to get it most of the way right in camera. And of course, shooting in raw, you, post-processing is necessary. You have to do it. So um, I don't spend a whole lot of time on it. Um, although I do a lot, you know, obviously your exposure temperature and I work with some curves a bit to, to kind of bump it a little bit to make it pop. Okay. And then in Photoshop, you'll do like minor touch-ups, clean-up, stuff like mm -hmm. that? Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I try to avoid it, but, you know, there that's inevitable. There's going to be something. On this one, it was really a curves. It was mostly a curves adjustment gotcha. on this one. Yeah, I really like this. So we, we, Tracy and I went through the, the portfolio. She, I got to be honest, she had a tough time getting down to 10. She, I did. <laughs> she I'm was so attached. indecisive. <laughs> and this one came in at the last minute. And she's like, do you think this is better than the other ones? And I'm like, I really love it. I'm not telling you what 10 to put in the show, but this yeah. one is really, really nice. Um, yeah. And it's a little bit different with that high contrast. It was different than yeah. anything else you had in here. So yeah. um, I think it does really, really That's well as I part of that it. set. Yeah. Yeah. Nice job. All right, let's get on to this next one. Now you're now you're talking my language here. I know. Yeah. You're the warbler king. Yeah, talk to me about this <laughs> this Kentucky warbler. Uh yeah. Skulky birds. Very skulky birds. Skulky birds. Yep. Dense brush, habitat low. Yep. Um, I'm not gonna lie, there was some blood, sweat, and tears with this species, mm -hmm. literally. Um uh, it's just worked really hard for it revisited it multiple times and you know i have some images of it out in the open but this is one i really liked because i feel like it just shows it true to its habitat very deep in the brush um finding focus on this was a challenge you know a little bit of a breeze would come through and i'd lose it you know the foliage would go in front of it but you know it's just kind of a hold your breath and see see what sticks you know and now you've done more songbirds this mm -hmm. pet, like 2019 you did a lot more is that fair yeah. to say than in previous yeah. years yeah yeah i think 2019 was 2018 was kind of a lot of stumbling and learning species songs habitat um where to find them you know and then this year's the first year i would say i put a bit more effort into them so it's fun it's a challenge they make me they make me swear a lot not gonna lie but so yeah. how, how would you, if you had to rate, so I break the birds always, I, I just, in my head, I have to break everything down. So I, I yeah. do shorebirds, songbirds, yeah. raptors, uh, yeah. and waterfowl. Right. So for you, what's your favorite? Of all of those? If you raptors. can only shoot one, raptors, oh, you didn't even hesitate. Raptors, yeah, hands down. I love owls. Um, I love their mysteriousness, their uh, some the soulful eyes, the look. I mean, it's just they're difficult, you know. Um, but I enjoy them. I I really enjoy my time with them. Okay. I would have to say I would ha raptors, you know, and and shorebirds. I love. You know, I feel like with shorebirds, you can really create some intimate images with mm -hmm. them and get creative. Um, and raptors are just a challenge. There's something powerful about them. Yep. You know, it's just a different different bird yeah you know? i think i've always told people the to me the hardest ones um are raptors and it, it's just really tough to get perspective on them and, and yeah you know they're always either over your head or on a branch oh, above yeah. you so to get yep. those like really eye level looks becomes really really tough it is um, yeah songbirds are pretty tough <laughs> they are they're pretty I, tough i'm telling you blood sweat and tears yeah. every time i'm scratched up i'm bleeding i'm they're sweaty all i'm <laughs> crying on my way home <laughs> and then and then you talk about like ducks and you're like wow ducks are really hard too because they are unless you've got one of those sweet spots where the ducks are really tame but i i, I don't, don't have i don't have it <laughs> when i, I feel like with ducks if you blink they hear you yes oh i blinked they're gone no my they, ducks. they totally know like they just know you're there i swear do. you don't you don't move you don't do anything and all no. of a sudden they just start slowly Duck. drifting away um, and I think raptors are perceptive. I think they, they tend to know you're there. It's just a matter of how tolerant that individual um, mm -hmm. is. I mean, you've probably seen some owls that are real skittish and just go and, oh, yeah. and raptors and others that will kind of hang out. Absolutely. Yeah, you, Absolutely. Got a red, you got a red shouldered, I think, that's pretty good, right? Yeah, I just got, there's one pretty regularly. And, um, you know, I, she's pretty, pretty reliable in, in where she hunts. And it's, you know, just a matter of, you know, being her being close enough to the side of the road to get some good shots of her, but boy, is she gorgeous. Yeah.
Yeah, we don't get a ton of red shoulders. I know mm -mm. in some parts of the company in the country, rather they do, but um, for us to get red shoulders in this part of the country, they're here, yeah. but to get good looks is, is pretty uncommon. Yeah, there's a pair here pretty regularly over the winter. It's just the second year in a row. And, um, you know, I didn't see her at first when I first started going in that area. And then probably the last two or three weeks, I'm like, yep, there she is. She's back. So yeah. it's pretty cool seeing her again. All right. I guess we all right, We got another mammal up. So I guess we got to talk about mammals now for a minute. So <laughs> was this from this year, This the, the moose that's up now? For, uh, from 2019? From yes, Not that from was October. Okay. That was just this past October. Um, so went up to the Moosehead Lake region and, uh, you know, I want moose. I decided last March, uh, the prior year I wanted to go, but I just kind of missed out on getting things scheduled. Um, but, you know, going into 2019, I was just convinced, like, this is what I'm doing. I'm getting moose during moose rut. So we went up uh, first week of October and... Um, I did have a guide for my first two days because I was really nervous about not knowing the area, um, not finding them. So I had him Monday, Tuesday. So Sunday I went out and started driving around looking for the right habitat on my own. Um, came to this area that looked great. I saw some signs that indicated uh, something had been going through there regularly. Um, and then I had my guide Monday and Tuesday morning and the weather warmed and we saw very little. I got no shots those first two days. But what I did learn was that I was right in where I selected as ideal habitat. We went exactly where I had gone on my own on Sunday. So um, this it was taken on our last evening there. Um, in the morning, uh, I went out with my son and we saw probably 15 to 18 moose that morning oh, in wow. a field. And when I got back... And told my daughter that we had seen that many moose and she wasn't with us. She was pretty upset. So I said, I'll take you back out this evening. This is our last chance, you know, because we're leaving in the morning. And we went out in the evening and we were driving around to the spots I had seen them during the week. And we weren't seeing anything. And we were starting to feel defeated. And I said to her, I'm like, we have one more road to check. We're going to turn this corner. And, I, you know, we did our best. And that's just the way it goes sometimes. Um so we turned the corner and there was this guy standing there and you know, the light was amazing. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, the sun had set, it was dusk. The fall foliage was peak. So the trees were glowing. Um, she was excited. I was excited. Uh, it was my shutter speed on this one twentieth. Yeah. So it was pretty dark. Um, and I set up, I'm taking some shots. And I, I can almost not see, I mean, the light was really low for this. And then when I, you know, I just kept dropping my shutter speed down to get the ISO down. And then when I looked at the back of camera and saw the colors that it grabbed, I was just like, wow, mm -hmm. like, that's amazing. I did the pinks, the purples, the oranges. I just loved it. Yeah. Did you use a tripod then at 120th? Uh, Do you remember? Yes. Okay. I think I did on this one. Yeah. I think I did on this one. I've done it without, um, you know, <laughs> just kind of think like a sniper, hold your breath, yep. don't breathe, and just fire away. But um, this, I think I did have time to set up a tripod and get some shots. And, okay. you know, he sauntered off into the woods, and that was the end of the day, but it, it turned out pretty well. And when you're shooting birds, you typically don't use a tripod, right? Do you just handhold? No. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yes. Monopod yeah. or just handhold? I am dangerous with a monopod i take stuff out <laughs> okay. i can't i can't do a monopod i've tried it okay it's it's just bad so no I, um if i'm set up in an area where like i know I'm, you know i'm going to be working on something like you know if it's owls or something short eared owls in flight i, I i'm either handheld because i just like the mobility you know yeah. but yeah. if i'm hiking you know moving around a lot then i'll i'll pop it on a tripod and hike with it yeah, I just did uh, a thing called Six Myths of Bird Photography. I actually, I think I made it public today. Um, I'll have to put something out. But one of the myths is that you have to use a tripod to be a wildlife photographer. Um, I see so yeah. many people and it just feels so cumbersome. And I, I certainly I, think there's yeah. a time and place for it. Um, but, you know, I don't think there's any, any law that says you have to use a tripod. And, and a lot of people, especially people that like to move and be creative with compositions, mm -hmm. um, I find that they don't. It's cumbersome. Yeah. It's cumbersome. I agree. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's get on to the next one. Uh, so moose, the next one. Now this one, this is the little screech out <laughs> with woodpecker. This yeah. one you got a little notoriety from, right? 
Yeah, actually, it's, it just got featured by two hubs, two more hubs today. But um, it's been picked up by um, a news agency in the UK, um, and it's been published throughout the UK. Uh, I think Germany, France, Italy. Um, yeah, so it's it's been published quite a few times. I still get notifications on that, but people love it. it it's not honestly aesthetically, it's not one of my favorite images. Right. But I like the inter the interaction, the behavior. So. Yeah. And it tells a story. Yep. So, how many times do you get like a screech owl and a woodpecker in the same frame, like yeah. that close? And you know, I guess the story is get out of my hole, right? Like this is, <laughs> like yeah, you're, like, you're in my hole. You know, this screech moves around. There's a lot of cavities in this area, so you know you have the woodpeckers in there, you have the screech owls in there, and you know what I believe happened is the 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 woodpecker had a cache you know, stashed away in this cavity and she went to check on it and found this screech there. Yeah. And she just, you know, she was all around that cavity. I don't think the screech, I mean, it, if at all, barely opened an eye. Mm -hmm. That is so, so funny. Yeah. It That's was fun. Great. All right. Let's get on to, um, now I got the fox up. Now this one, I think, mm -hmm. I think you told me this was probably either your most popular image or, or, you know, the one you got the best feedback on or maybe the most demand for prints out of this one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's um, And Canon USA featured that one too, which was cool. Um, this one and the, the one that of the two foxes together is on Canon's website somewhere, which I stumbled upon recently by accident. I didn't even know it was there. How cool is but, that? Um, yeah, this, this was, you know, you're set up. You know the foxes are there. A friend had invited me and we went up. And, you know, the, the story was that they're coming out pretty regularly at two in the afternoon. So we were there and set up by two. And um, I'm flat on the ground in this mesh camo stuff. And it was early May. It got hot that day. So I'm cooking. And it went, so we were set up by two. And two o'clock turned into three o'clock. And three o'clock turned into four o'clock. And four o'clock turned into five o'clock. And I'm like, I now have a bruise on my chin from resting my chin on the mm -hmm. top of my camera waiting. And um, my friend had walked up to the house to check with the homeowner just to let them know, hey, we're still down here. And I'm not kidding. He, you know, he wasn't very far away whenever this little one came out and just sat there and stretched and turned. And when she turned and faced the sun, I was like in heaven. You know, it was just, you know, like, wow, look at this. Yeah. And then the then t the sibling, the litter mate came out and um, they kind of interacted a little bit. And um, it was just, you know, wow. And again, this is a this is a, you know, exposing for the highlights um, and then going further with some curves, some dodging in post processing. Yeah. Yeah, when you showed me this, I I was like, holy shit, that is really good. Like, <laughs> Thank really, you. Re like award winning. It has like a good. storybook kind of feel to it. I, you know, people have oh, said, it's, oh, it's like a storybook. Yeah. It's absolutely, yeah, it's stunning. Thank you. Yeah. yeah Everything so is soft about it. It's, you know, yeah. you got the rim light, the light mm -hmm. is just right, the look is unbelievable. And yeah. I think you did a really nice job. I don't know um, what you did as far as what it looked like out of cam, but it doesn't look like it, it looks very lightly edited, but it looks like mm -hmm. it's done just right so that, you know, that background doesn't play into it. And it really just mm -hmm. puts all of the focus. I mean, your, your eyes literally follow that little trail of light from the left and then it just goes right up to the eyes. It's, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. It was, yeah, I so call good. it sun kissed. <laughs> so good. So good. Thank all right. You. All right. Uh, is this the last one? This is the last one. It is. Yeah. Take us through this one. Oh, uh, long-eared owl, tough bird, really difficult species. Yes. Looking for that, uh, looking for that owl locally for, you know, two or three seasons. I can't tell you how many dense cedars and junipers that I have hiked through looking for pellets and whitewash on trees and just come out with my parka, my shirt, my hat and everything full of pine needles. You know, you're just like, ugh, you know, and spending hours really looking for them and coming home empty handed over and over and over again. So, um, my good friend, Rena, I, and her great friend, Brandon, we, we drove up to, to Canada, um, to an area that had them. And, you know, it, it was a lot of work. It, this, this species was a lot of work. Um, nothing the first day, second morning had them out and about a bit. Um, 
couple shots, nothing crazy. Um, went back out again in the evening, nothing. Went out the next morning, nothing. Went out the next night, nothing. And then our last morning was this morning. Um, we got some some snow um, came through and you know that was dissipating and um, we're walking around and she's perched in this pine tree mm. you know in the woods and you know it kind of just caught my breath you know when I saw her like that it was amazing um, it was a tough shot to get um, there was a lot of between the trail and where she was there was a lot of uh, shrub and twigs and brush um, and you can kind of see some in the foreground a little, you know, a hint of that. But, um, you know, I, I'm like, I, I, I got to get this. So, you know, from my tripod, it wasn't high enough and I'm not tall. So I'm, I'm standing on my toes and I'm holding my tripod leg in the, my left hand and I'm holding the camera in my right hand. And I'm just like, you know, how much shutter speed can I get to, you know, I, I'm not stable right now holding all this. So I got it up to one four hundredth and I just fired off some shots and just prayed that, you know, I cleared, I just wanted to clear the eyes. You know, mm -hmm. I was like, if I can clear the eyes, I'm good. Um, and then I was reviewing back a cam and I'm like, I think I cleared the eyes. Yeah. Not, you know, <laughs> I love this. Yeah. And the composition's really outstanding. The mood is there. I mean, it, I mean, this is like everything you want in a, in a photograph and it only really takes, you didn't get a ton of owls up there, right? No. Mm -mm. So it really no, only it, takes it was, one. It it does. It, it's just, it's a lot of work. You yeah. know, this species, you know, it's a hard species. Oh, and it's yeah. just, you just, you, you almost just have to just commit yourself to focusing on just the one, you know, and up in that area, we knew there were some great spots for waterfowl. Um, there were some other owls that were in the area we could have looked for, but we were like, no, we really have to just focus on this one species especially after you know when you only have a couple of days in an area yep. and you start off and you're strike 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 over and over again you just you just have to stay at it so yep. yeah beautiful all right uh, here's what i'm going to do i pulled up um i have a couple selections that i wanted to go through so i don't know if you're able to see these but i'll walk you through what i picked um as some of my you're favorites frozen of yours. on my on my feet is frozen so Oh, okay. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, let me just take a look down here and see. I'll let the group know if we're good on on the audio if it's still coming through. So I'll give it uh -huh. a second to catch up, and they'll they'll hear the comment in a minute, okay. and then I'll walk you through um, what I have going on for. I picked okay. three of my favorites of yours that weren't okay. uh, presented, and I have like four or five others that I just threw in there just because I want to show off um, show off how great you are. Yeah, I think we're okay. Oh, I see you now. Okay. Yeah, I think we're okay. All right, so here's what I got. Thank the you, first, Larry. The first one I put up here is um, is another moose. It's much, much different than, than the <laughs> one was. that you posted. So this is yeah. a, uh, a moose silhouette on blue sky. Yeah. I have um, the pair of foxes that you had just mentioned before. Uh, th this one, they're actually like licking their lips at the same time or licking yeah. their noses at the same time. <laughs> Love that yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, I had a horned grebe in here that I really liked. It's a profile, kind of going away, but the... The, the water is real smooth. I just love that species. Yeah. Um, I picked a small and frame spotted sandpiper just because I really love the composition in this one. Uh, this okay. one's in the rain. I think you remember that one. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, I also really, really loved the composition on this common golden eye. This is a pear in the snow. Yeah. Uh, you know, most often my tendency naturally is to compose waterfowl in the bottom third. In this case, it's up in the top third, kind of squeezed near the corner. But I, I just think it really, really works because it's very minimalist and yeah. it gives you a ton of negative space um, along the bottom. Now, yeah. let, let me see where I'm at. I don't think I'm up to my, no, I'm not, I'm not up to my, my top three yet. Um, composition, I, I, I wanted to theme, because one of the things I think you do so well and that I think a lot of people can learn from is just taking chances with composition. So I, I am now showing one that you originally had in your top 10 and I stole from you. It's not my top three, but I stole the cormorant. And okay. um, it's so small in frame, it's hardly recognizable. But when you look at the overall composition, and I think you converted this to um, to a black and white. Yes, yes. Or grayscale. So this uh -huh. this now, you know, the leading line of those little piers or, or what remnants of some kind of posts in the water leads you right mm -hmm. to the bird, which if it was just the bird, you might not, it, you know, might take a while to figure out what's over there. But the fact that mm -hmm. the lines lead you right there, uh, perfectly done. I really, Thank really you. love that one. All right. Yeah, that, that was an accident. 
Yeah. <laughs> that was an accident. <laughs> it was an accident. I was shooting those. I had my wide angle. I was shooting long exposure landscapes and that that bird flew in and I really didn't think anything of it at the uh -huh. time. And then when I was editing, I was like, oh, well, that that's works. cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then my top three. Uh, you have a pied bill grebe I, with the wings out. And this is it, when you posted this originally. I don't know how well this did for you, but for waterfowl. Um, I really, really just loved the pose, and the light is just perfect. So really, really well done. Um, just getting the everything right about this. Shutter speed was sixteen hundredth. Yeah. ISO was pushed a little bit, but that's yeah. you know a really smart choice when you when you're anticipating action like this. Um, but the light was he was really actively splendid. courting. Oh yeah, yeah. He, he was actively courting. There was another grebe there on the water, and he was. In the distance, he was chasing after her and singing, and then, you know, so I knew, I was hoping something would happen, and I, you know, just decided, okay, let's, we're going to have to bump the ISO on this, so, yeah, there he is, little awesome. cutie. Awesome. All right, uh, I added a prothonotary warbler in here um, because I'm a songbird guy, and this yes. one, this one's special, Tracy. Like, this is, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know, you know, you probably have images that you love that aren't super popular and I have mm -hmm. stuff that I love that's not super popular. Sure. I don't know if people yeah. got this, but yeah. this is like unbelievable to have just a little bit of the eye poking out. Uh, yeah. the, the tail is fanned out. You can actually see the white um, yes. on the on the tail feathers, all the feather detail on the back, but the eye still in focus and yes. the pose is amazing. So um, really, really well done to recognize that. I was happy with that. At first, I wasn't sure if I liked it. And yep. then I was like, you know, I liked seeing the um, the transition in the plumage from the yellow to yes. the gray on the back. And yep. the eye peaking. You know, yep. If the eye had not been peaking, it wouldn't have worked. But Yeah. And it yeah, you go from that really bright head. And then it's almost like a perfect gradient of, uh -huh. you know, this yellow orange. And then it transitions. And then it gets right into the gray at the tail. And then it leads you right to the tail. So, yeah, yeah. beautiful, beautiful composition. And then let me see. My number one favorite. Okay. of yours do you know what it is i don't <laughs> it's a short-eared owl oh really yep and one of the things i liked about this to me this was really iconic for you so when if i had to pick personally like uh -huh. if somebody said okay pick one image that defines tracy yeah this would be it is that so, the foggy one yeah the foggy one i think yeah. you had two versions um this I is did, yeah. yeah this i don't know this does have some color in it, so it doesn't look like it's converted to black and white. It's some, not. It okay. was just really, really foggy. Heavy. I mean, <laughs> it was soupy. It yeah. was soupy that day. You couldn't see anything. And as you know, we're hiking off the the battlefield, and we're like, I'm like, what is that? Is that a shorty? You know? And you just set up and you take some shots, and you look at the back of Cam, and you're like, heck, yeah, it is. Yeah. Just looking right back. So I kind of moved around a little bit to get that cannon in the background, yeah. but. That was a heavy fog day. Yeah, and that's really, I think, what what um, exemplifies some of your work is that you really take the time to think about the overall image and what's going to go into it. And it doesn't have to be a bird crammed into a frame. Mm -mm. Um, I think you mix up your composition so you've got some tight stuff, some loose stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but this one I really, I, it, and again, it's kind of your neck of the woods, so it feels like it's mm -hmm. it's got Tracy written all over it. So really yeah, nice whole, job, Tracy. Yeah. Love that Thank one. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to kind of take a, a not a really a break. I, I looked through to see if there were any questions. So as I switch um, kind of kind of the segment of the show, we're going to switch over from Tracy's top 10. We're going to do a quick, a quick critique, which is something I like having uh, when I get guests on so that they can give feedback. But we'll take a quick break. I'll look in the comments to see if there's any questions that have come in from anybody. And um, mostly what I'm seeing is amazing compliments, Tracy. So oh, I'm not seeing you. a lot of questions, but I am seeing I a whole been looking, lot of... So, <laughs> I'm trying to stay focused, so yeah. I haven't been able to look, but thank you. Yeah, It's awesome seeing people here watching and, and engaging. That's great. Yeah. All right. I'll keep an eye out for questions. So if there are some that roll through, I'll just make a note. We'll come back and visit them at the end. Right. But um, I don't know if you have that other album open that I created. So there's a... Um, oh, okay. Yeah, go into... Um, Go into my uh, Flickr, and I have an album that's up there. Mm -hmm. It's actually called Sepkovic, so it's going to be pretty easy to find. And we're just going to go through a couple images. We didn't really go through these images. Um, what I ask, I, I have the my Patreon members have submitted some images for critique. So Tracy and I are going to walk through a few of them. Uh, a couple of them submitted more than one, and so I'll show you know what those other ones are that we're going to talk about. 
Um, let me know when you get there. It's I am looking it's for gonna, the album. Oh, yeah, there it is. It's going to okay. start with a with a ring neck pheasant. We're not going to critique this one. Uh, I just mm -hmm. wanted to show two styles from somebody that submitted. Uh, this mm -hmm. is Gregory uh, Lisiak, I'm going to guess. I might have said it wrong, but he's in here. Um, I had two of them. The first one was a ring necked pheasant, and then the second one was a sparrow. Now, I think this is a European bird, so I'm not going to guess the species. Um, but let me start with you and we'll just kind of alternate and give some thoughts on these and, and it's okay to disagree on these. Sometimes I agree with my guests. Sometimes we disagree. Uh, what are your thoughts on this one? Um, I like the composition. I like the background. There's a cool thing happening with, you know, the foliage in the sky that was back there. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I think the only thing I would really do here is maybe warm it up a little bit it, here on my side. It's looking a little cool. Okay. Yeah, and but I, I think it's a great shot. Yep, I love the composition. So I think um, this is shot. It's not directly backlight. It's it. I would call it like back side light. It looks like it's coming in probably at, like behind him at forty five degrees. But it's it's kind of a smart choice to take a chance with this. And one of the things I did like about this is you've got these. I'll call it wheat. I don't know what this this uh, grain is, but these little fuzzy things. Uh, so shooting backlight is a really smart choice on this. Uh, there's one little stick that's kind of creeping in on the bird. So if I was <laughs> you know, able to just clone that out. I might just get rid of that yeah. digitally. And then two little dark lines up in the background. But, you know, overall, yeah. I really like it. I think the, that backlit or side lit uh, was, was a good choice for this one. And I, I agree with you. I really like the composition on this one. Yeah, I like that. Oh, on the warm up comment, I was looking at the pheasant. But yeah, oh, yeah no, 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 no. I was looking at the pheasant. Oh, okay. But no, on this one, I think the, the tone is good. The warmth is nice. And yep. I agree on, on the little... Um, the little stick that's coming up and then the two black lines in the background. But no, okay. I really like that a lot. All right. The next one is from uh, Andrew Sonia. Uh, Andrew submits images to me every month for critique. And he he's like, I, I don't mean this in a bad way. I mean, in a good way. He's all over the place. Like he really takes chances with stuff. He does all like kinds that. of different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so he's he's trying to figure out, I think, what style works for him. But he's really mm -hmm. experimenting with different focal lengths and different compositions, different action. Um, so here we've got, again, I don't know the species because I'm not sure exactly where where he's sending them in from. But it looks like it could be maybe a greater yellow legs or some mm -hmm. kind of willet or something like that. I was like thinking that. lesser yellow legs. Yeah. yeah, something like that. So what do you think of this one? I love it. I think it's really cool. Um, I like the action, the splash, the focus is still there on the bird. Um, I like um, his edit. You know, with the darker background, it really emphasizes the the splash sparkles kind of, you know, above throughout the frame. But your eye still does go right there to the bird. Um, I think it's a I think it's a, a unique um, good edit. All right. Uh, this next one is by Alicia. Sp Ali I say it wrong every time. Alicia. Alicia Smith. Sometimes <laughs> I had somebody that worked for me that said that same name spelling differently. So I go back and forth because I worked with her for so long. Yeah. Um, she does a lot of shorebirds. And I've been, I've been working with her for about six months. She's made unbelievable progress over six I, months. I enjoy her work a lot. Yeah. I really do. I with Alicia, you can tell she loves what she's doing. Yep. She loves the birds. Um, her she loves her subject. She's always mindful of them um, when she's out when she's out with them. And I mean, look at this; it's beautiful. It's Gorgeous. absolutely beautiful. Yeah, the light. The only, Go ahead. No, so the only note that I would say on this one is, and it's minor, is I would just pull from that upper right corner down to put the bird maybe you know, more on the third versus having that space on the right and having the bird centered, but it's beautiful. The light's 100%. beautiful. The reflection, it's smooth, the tonality, everything. Yep. I love it. hundred percent agree with the composition. So I would have, I would have done the exact same thing. I would have just drug it yeah. in uh, because it's the, a little, yeah. It, yeah. And if the bird was straight down, like sometimes you'll see those shore birds, like where uh -huh. the bill's like perfectly straight down. I think that makes yeah. sense to go right down the middle. Um, I like, also like the fact that this leg, a lot of people would take points off that this little motion blur back there on the rear leg. But the oh. fact that there's a little bit of motion blur, and I think it is motion blur. I don't think it's just out of focus. No, um, I think it's movement. Yeah. yeah, but the fact that the bill is like totally still and sharp and there's a little yeah. bit of movement back there, I really like that as well. So really well done. Uh, that was yeah. one of my favorite images I've seen from her it's over the beautiful. last couple of months. It's beautiful, yeah. I really enjoy her work. All right. Uh, Nicholas, and this one is uh, Thurston, and this is a really tough shot in some ways. You mm -hmm. photographed kinglets, I'm, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. They're like bumblebees yeah. all over the place. The fact that he got one to stand still. Yeah. 
uh, in the open like this and, and got a really sharp picture of it is impressive enough. It is. I agree. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like this. It's a it's a really nice profile. This would fall into me more of to you know when I talk to people about uh, bird photography, there's this one element that just wants to capture detail in the subject and focus on the subject, and then there's kind of these artistic versions. To me, this isn't something I would say, hey, I'm going to print this and blow it up big and put it on my wall. But it's a beautiful image. It's really well sure. isolated. Lots of detail. Uh, the light's yeah. perfect. There's really nothing wrong with it. Yeah, it's a difficult bird. It's a really difficult one to get. Yeah, super challenging. Mm -hmm. um, this one is from a, 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 actually a local photographer here. He's uh, John Higgins, uh, one of my one of my really really good friends. Um, mm -hmm. John is a retired guy that loves birds, and he just wants to photograph everything. One of his goals was to photograph mm -hmm. every warbler in PA. So um, so we go out quite a bit looking for warblers. And when he sent me this one, there's some things that I, I gave him on the critique that some things that I liked and it's a couple things that I didn't. And I actually, re I'm going to show you the edit I did for him just to send it back and give him some ideas. But um, what I what I didn't like was that the background, while it had some breaks in it, it was a little bit distracting. I thought in this case, the background would be better, a little bit more monotone or, or, or one color. Uh, yeah. But I did like the composition. The angle of the head is great. The fact that you're getting, you know, any warbler at eye level can be challenging. Sure. So he did a great yeah. job with all that. Any any thoughts on that before I show you my edit? No, um, I agree. It's definitely a difficult one to get. Um, I'm thinking, you know, on this one, I would maybe just maybe move it down a little bit to the lower left side of the frame. But um yeah, it is definitely a difficult to get an eye level look at at these birds. All right, and then this was my edit. Um, so if you flip to the next one, Tracy, you'll see it, it's pretty straightforward. I just yeah. you know kind of lightened the bird a little bit to make it stand yeah. out. So I'll toggle cool. back and forth on my screen for the viewers, um, okay. and you'll see that those bright areas got minimized a little bit. I didn't totally yeah. remove them, but just minimized them, brighten the yeah. bird, and I think I may have added a little bit of space up top on this one. But um, yeah, overall, really nice image from John. Yeah. And effectively doing the same by adding some space at the top, it pushes the bird a little lower on the fly in the in the frame. Yep. So, yep. yeah. Okay. Um, there's a, a duck. We're not going to critique this one. I just wanted to show this one from Andrew because he submitted two that were so totally different. Um, I wanted to show okay. the, the the waterfowl as part of his collection. I, I didn't have a whole lot to critique with this one, so I'm going to go to yeah. this. I don't know if we ever. Decide, I don't know anything about mammals, so I'm calling this. Somebody can type in. I'm calling this a chimpanzee, but if I'm wrong, somebody fix it. Do you, is this a chimpanzee, Tracy? I'm going to... You don't know I'm gonna, either. I'm going to go with chimpanzee okay. on this one as well. <laughs> All right. So so let me get your thoughts on this one. Um, I think there's a lot of emotion in it. Um, there's a, a wariness or a sadness here um, in, the, in the subject's eyes. Um, I would question where it's being photographed, whether it's in the wild or whether it's in um, a, a zoo or other type of place where it's enclosed. Um, so, you know, I'm guessing it's in an enclosed place, which, you know, just kind of shows the sadness of this of this animal and, and being maybe in that situation. Yeah, and I agree. I, I'm going to show an edit um, just, just to kind of give my thoughts around the, mm -hmm. the image itself. And one of the things when, when I looked at this originally, I thought, if this was part of a story, I think it really, really works. So in other words, if this is a, I don't know, if this thing went into a village and you're in the middle of Africa and it grabs a blanket, puts it over its head, I think it's an unbelievable image. Right. Um, if this is taken at a zoo, it just feels different, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. So one of the things I will say when you when when dealing with these portraits is, you know, just manipulating light. This was my edit on the same image. And, and the goal for me on this was just to minimize uh, this blanket and, and kind of take the focus away from the blanket. And I just brought some some light and painted the light down here into mm -hmm. the eyes and the face. So I'll, I'll yeah. toggle this back and forth again. Um, and it's just a philosophy I have when I'm dealing, whether it's birds or I, the rare mammals that I shoot, um, I almost never shoot people, so I don't worry too much about that. But uh, my my thinking is always to minimize areas that that don't have interest and always bring light from off this off the frame onto the the subject where you want it. And in this case, I think you're right. The expression and the eyes are really compelling. Yeah. So this light, and I, I may have added some space over here, but this light just really starts to paint it on there. Yeah. Little saturation on the eyes too, but really easy edit. I mean, you're talking like thirty seconds, forty seconds yeah. to do this edit. And um, it keeps your eyes on the eyes. Where, mm -hmm. uh, you know, pre-edit, 
you know, with the, the lighter areas, there's your eye tends to bounce off the face. Yeah. But when you've darkened that, you know, your eye is really not being distracted from the right. face. Yeah. Uh, I, we did have a couple questions come, came in. So yeah. uh, Rena asked about approaching the shot. So uh, do you find that it's more organically reacting to the birds that you have, or do you typically have a shot in mind and you shed, set up for it as best you can? Um, well, birds are unpredictable, which we all know. Um, they're going to do what they're going to do. They're going to fly or move or go where they want to go. So I think it's it's one part, you know, I always have, I have goal shots in mind before I go shoot. So I do have some a list of shots in my mind that I'd like to get on that particular evening based on the light, the subject, the location. So, you know, I, I keep those thoughts, those goal shots in the back of my mind. But as I and, and if the opportunity presents itself, then, you know, I'm like, sweet, I'm going to get that you know shot I wanted. But for the most part, you are you're working with what you have there. And there, so there is a certain as a uh, amount of reacting to what's happening yeah and and somebody did ask a question about shooting uh i guess waterfowl or just in, yeah, in general yeah. what, oh, yeah, what tips dirty. do you have yeah <laughs> any <laughs> any tips for uh, this because you you so shoot a lot of shorebirds i do and it's just there's no way around it you're going to get dirty i do um i like clothing that is like the quick dry you know, stuff that you can kind of just brush the sand right off. Yep. Um, if it's colder weather, um, you know, like for ducks, I will put frog togs over top of my clothes um, whenever I go shoot. And then, you know, they're, they end up encrusted in mud. You just shake them off once they dry and move on. But, yeah, definitely, you know, getting low is essential for waterfowl and shorebirds. And you're going to get dirty when you do it. So you just yep. kind of have to... Uh, what are those things? Waiters. You know, sometimes people are, will wear waiters too for that. Yeah. All right. Um, let me see. I, I, let me just check real quick and see if there's anything else that came in. How long has Tracy been shooting? Yeah, Tracy, you you told us overall that you got that first lens in 2016, I think. Yeah, I, I started focusing on wildlife a lot heavier in February of 2016. So coming up on four years now. Um, and advice for improving shots. I mean, I think you just always look at your work objectively and be your own worst critic to say, okay, what do I like about this? What don't I like about it? And what am I going to do differently next time? You know, study other images. What out, what images do you like, you know, and then just, it's, in a, it, it's, it's a work in progress. I, I feel like I have a lot to learn. I have, I have a lot to do. Um, but it's just being aware of what you're doing and challenging yourself. And you didn't start, uh, you, you had been photographing for much longer than three years, though, right? You used to do a lot of landscapes and stuff like that? I was doing um, soccer and okay. landscapes. I played around with some macros. Um, yeah, so stuff like that. Okay. Uh, that was in 2009. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. so you and definitely wildlife, had a... Wildlife... Yeah, a grasp on... You know, I, I read this book when I got my first DSLR. It was called Understanding Exposure. And that book explained a lot about, you know, your f-stop, your um, ISO, your shutter speed, how they all work together, composition. Um, I just... I learned so much from that book and then just applied it, you know. And then having that background in landscapes... Um, with composition, pulled that in when I started doing wildlife. Awesome. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna take one more peek. Uh, perfect timing. And uh, I gotta, I gotta be honest, uh, really great job on the show today, Tracy. I know you were a little oh, nervous. A little. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy's like, this isn't really my comfort zone. I, I think I may have pushed her a little into this. You pushed me into it for sure. I, I definitely did. I told You're her like, she was okay. going to be great. And um, like, like, honestly, not playing soccer right now. You're doing it. <laughs> yeah. Amazing, amazing job. And you did a great Thank job you. explaining your images that. as well. Um, just a couple housekeeping things. You saw me flash up the screen. I'm going to put two things up. Um, this is a, the, my Patreon site is up now. Take a look at that if you're interested. Um, I also just put out a new video. Um, it's called Six Myths of Bird Photography. Uh, it's something I worked on a little bit. The show has kind of moved in the direction that we're doing a lot of uh, these 
10 images with. I love to feature people and get new people out there and get their work out there like Tracy. Uh, I saw actually Simon was on earlier. We had him as a guest on the show a while ago, did a wonderful job. Uh, in addition to these monthly shows, which I'll continue to do, uh, we will add some 10 or 15 minute videos. I'm trying to do some 10 minute plugs. Um, just about thoughts. They're not really long shows, just kind of like quick hitting videos. This will be the first of those. I'll probably only do three or four of these a year. Um, but hopefully check this one out, share it with other people and encourage them to subscribe to the channel so we can have them to, uh, continue to see great guests like Tracy. So, Thanks so much. Yeah, let me take one more look here, see if anybody's out there. I think we're going to get a lot of, of, uh, of people agreeing with me that this was a great episode. So um let me just thanks take for a tuning in i really appreciate it yeah it was awesome um real quick edgar's asks you had mentioned going out with a guide before your previous trip how do you go yeah. finding a guide for the first time um i just started searching online for the area i was going in um i knew that i did not want to be in with a group um i tend to avoid groups so I found someone who would do one on one and you know that worked for me. So, you know, didn't get the shots that day, but I had a great time with my guide. I learned a lot about moose, moose behavior, the area. So, there's always something to learn from a, you know, look for those local guides um who who live there and are and aren't just traveling to that area. So, yeah, and I think there's I some do. I think there's something to say for that. Um, you know, you can waste a lot of money on a trip uh, oh, yeah. I, I did it in, in Texas. I prefer to, to do it on my own without yeah. guides only because I mm -hmm. like the research process. But then there's, you know, you get out there and you think, God, like, what if, like, what if I get out here and get nothing? You know, that was and, my panic. Yeah. And yeah. you do panic. It, you, it's a lot of money to travel. And yeah. I think more importantly than the money, it's just the time. I, I, how often would you say you travel? Like twice a Not year? Not as nearly as often as I'd like. But yeah. yeah, you know, twice a year. And, you know, in this situation, even though I had the guide, we got nothing the two days yeah. we were out. You know, so there's always that chance. And yeah. I really started getting antsy after that. But yeah. it, it ended up working out, obviously. But, you know, we don't get to travel nearly as much as we like for this for this hobby of ours. So I know. All right. Well, hey, listen, I look forward to uh, running into you soon. we got to probably shoot yeah. some spring songbirds or something together this year. Absolutely. Uh, I, I know I would enjoy it. Yeah, got to get that magnolia. What was it? Not the magnolia. Morning uh, warbler. Nashville. The morning. Uh, the morning <laughs> warbler for sure. I missed it last year completely. It was actually, I think, the only warbler I didn't photograph uh, was morning warbler last year. So, uh, yeah, I would yeah. take that or I would take Nashville warblers because I don't have any oh, good pictures man. of them. Yeah. All, All right, right. We'll get them. All right. Well, I'm going to sign off, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Tracy, Thank great you. job. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to run this little outro. Tracy, don't say a word until I tell you to. Have a great night, everybody.